In this video, we will learn about intercellular signaling, which is how cells communicate with one another. Cell communication is important for a cell to sense and respond to its surroundings. This includes cellular activities such as cell growth and division, cell death, cell adhesion, and differentiation into specialized cell types such as brain and liver cells. For large complex organisms, cell signaling is also important for functional regulation and integration of processes such as the immune response, mood swings in puberty, and the ability to think and move. So how exactly do cells communicate? Intercellular signaling starts off with a signaling cell which displays or releases signal molecules known as ligands. The ligands bind to their specific complementary receptor that is expressed on the surface of the target cell, thereby transmitting the information and causing changes in the target cell. Intercellular signaling can be categorized into five types, contact-dependent, paracrine, autocrine, synaptic, and endocrine signaling. Let's understand these types of intercellular signaling using examples seen in day-to-day -day scenarios. When taking a walk in the garden, the lady was stung by a bee. Proteins found in the bee venom are engulfed by immune cells and presented as antigens bound on the surface of the cell membrane. The signaling cell is the antigen-presenting cell and the antigen is the ligand. The ligand interacts directly with the receptor of the target cell, which in this case is another type of immune cell. The immune response is initiated by contact-dependent signaling, where the ligand is membrane-bound and the cells are in direct membrane-membrane contact. The skin near the site of a bee sting becomes red and swollen. This is because skin cells release inflammatory molecules known as cytokines, which act as signal molecules that diffuse over short distances and act locally on nearby target cells. Such local signaling is known as paracrine signaling. Some of the signal molecules released by the cell bind to receptors on the cell membrane of the same cell. This is autocrine signaling, where the signaling cell and target cell are the same and the cell signals to itself. When the lady sees the packet of potato chips, there will be a signal sent from the neurons in the retina of her eye to the neurons in her brain. This is known as synaptic signaling. Electrical impulses are transmitted from the neuronal cell body to the axon which results in the secretion of neurotransmitters that diffuse across the synapse. After the chips are digested, the blood glucose level is kept constant by endocrine signaling. The endocrine cell secretes the signaling molecule, a hormone, into the bloodstream to be widely distributed to target cells in the body. Pancreatic cells are stimulated by sugar to produce a hormone known as insulin, which travels through the bloodstream to other cells in the body. Insulin binds to its receptors on the liver and muscle cells, and this triggers the uptake of sugar into these cells for storage. We can see the importance of intercellular signaling by looking at type 1 diabetes, which is caused by a breakdown in cell communication that results in dangerously high blood glucose levels. The pancreatic cells that produce insulin are lost, and therefore the insulin signal is also lost. There is no signal to the target cells for the uptake of glucose, and high blood glucose levels in patients may lead to diabetic coma. Hence, Patients have to perform insulin injections after meals to help re-establish cell signaling to the target cells. This brings the blood glucose level down and the disease is managed. 